Yeah, man, I hear you, man. Yeah, man, this is Clive, a.k.a. Chris Zogo, you know? Um, well, you can give me a minute to make a talk to your listeners, then. Mm. Yeah, man, this um, I got all the motor listeners from Jamaica, US, Britain, and the world, you know? Especially the one them that on YouTube and Bill Bates and Roman channel. You know, few over 20 years motor, I highlight the problem them and I get solution. But, you know, I see black people, but most alone can't do it alone, you know. But all we do, I think listening and we do, we talk and we complain amongst ourselves and pass blame and I wish the government, the white man, rich man and Jack and Jesus to solve them. Black people, if you know, say, and a responsibility to other people solve them problem, you know. If you know, say, the man we have been put by his neck, now, but take it off and let you lick it off and pump him in your face and step in a thing short. Government is doing, government has done good enough. Um, cause you, you see them a drive Pajero and the regular artists, them alright, cause them don't make it. And you see them a pop champagne, flat BMW, and a be a big mansion, but, you know, they're not being a factory for employee, you know. The problem that a face working and poor class don't affect them. I can't, well, I can't believe how fool going to be, you know, there are with the same people who cause the problem to fix it. We we'll complain about foreigners that buy up Jamaica, but instead, uh, we are buy up Jamaica, we buy up foreign goods. They don't know where the thing said, then get the money from. I see the money where you buy the goods, then use back and come, and come buy up Jamaica to use against you. We complain about Monsanto. But we shop at the supermarket all the time. And we don't even try to create our own supermarket. That we sell our own organic food. So we leave it up to them to solve our problem with them create. Marcus Gavi said, if we can't kind of do what other races do, you know, we don't deserve to die. And that is exactly what happened to me right now. If we can't, kind of who on the world say like the Chinaman who no deserve to stay poor and jobless? So who on the multinational like the white man? Who no be stay at the bottom of the political and economic system and big IMF? So who on the big farm like Monsanto? Who no deserve to die from cancer and dead of famine? Muta give you no know, no solution to your problem. But Muta, I, you alone can don't have the money to solve. A big problem, yeah. But if we put the money together, we can create the big man, big corporation, a big business that will represent our interests and agenda to work to solve our problem. I say, me don't say already, you know, if a thousand a motor listener put a thousand US dollars, that's a million US, hundred million Jamaica can set a foundation, start a business. We are going to invest in building and expanding black businesses like farm, supermarket, car creative, transportation, etc., etc., which will provide wealth and jobs amongst our own by ourselves. Talking and complaining is good, you know, because I like the problem. But it's time to rebuild business and structure to solve the problem that we complain about so much. Every race have them structures set up. That is why you can't see Chinese come from China, set up shop, and stack it out with all Chinese meal goods. All of that one knows to do is just be a buyer. You can't even blame the Chinese, you know, because you're not doing it for yourself anyways. My solution, I know the be all and all, but it's one thing that is in your power to do and can create a system that will outlast us all alive now, you know. Muta is the only man in Jamaica I feel that is trustworthy. That is why I am willing to invest a thousand US in him to set up a business to build our system. There must be at least, you know, a thousand happy listeners who believe in real self reliance. If not, I guess that Jamaican is doomed to want to be bigger. One thousand dollars, I don't know, you know, why. You see, no, 
Jamaicans say more than that from ganja, liquor, bleaching cream, clothes and care and big up, etc. You know, just over consumption. If you don't have a thousand, then you know what? You can get ten people to join you at one then. So I want all the serious motor listeners them to email motor, motor at iRacing.net. I call up and tell them to you, oh, you're ready to invest in IMF bill. You phone a system. So that means what to the people in the motor. Blessed man, give thanks, Bridget. <laughs> Roots Festival will be marked by loads of mind-blowing and memorable events. You'll be taken on a pilgrimage to Kunta Kinte Island, where you'll see vestiges of the slave trade, a trip down memory lane, and don't be surprised if you tear out during the entire tour. Uh, I, I think that's, I share that sentiment, you know, being in that little room where they said they kept uh, bad slaves who wouldn't cooperate until they got, uh, you know, docile or passive or whatever, until they could put them on the, on the ship, uh, you know, just kind of speaks to the, the cruelty of the whole thing. It makes it, makes it more real. You know, we think about it in the abstract, being Americans, um, you know, but being here gives us the opportunity to, to just kind of flesh that out and, and, uh, and really appreciate the, the uh, inhumanity of it, I guess. So it's, it's, it's been a good experience for us. The spiritual journey will also take you through a heritage trail that leads to San Domingo, a former Portuguese settlement where the occupiers had their gardens and symmetry. You'll be entertained with African music. <laughs> Food, cultural performances, among many other activities. In addition to the friendliness and cultural activities you'll enjoy from the Gambian people, you'll be well taken care of in good quality hotels. The accommodations are designed to give you maximum relaxation and unforgettable experience. Participate in Roots Redemption Day. Registration is now being accepted. If you would like to attend, please visit our website at rootsgambia.gm for more details. Come home. Reconnect. Reaffirm your African heritage. Rediscover your roots and be at one with your people. The 11th International Roots Festival, 9th to 17th of May, 2014. Aria team, thought-provoking, always smoking, lyrics like... The famous conscious reggae dance, well, it is called today, well, it will be called conscious reggae dance party and Gambia fundraising dinner will take place on Friday, May the 2nd at Cafe Africa. That's the part called Regal Theatre, usually called Regal Plaza now at Crossroads. And feature will be Luciano. You know, Luciano went to Gambia to that festival. Mike General also went to Gambia. Um, we have poetess Sharon Paris will be there. Um, we have, uh, Caveman, uh, we have Yellow Caveman, <laughs> Caveman, Yellow Caveman, you know, trust me, man. 
Why, you love cave man. And we have, I, I think Sizzler, Sizzler is the, the reggae ambassador for the festival. So we see that Sizzler will also be there tomorrow also, and yours truly will be there. Um, so a lot of the ones them who is on this program here is either going or have been there before. This is the cutting edge on RFM. Hey, and money transfer here, 24 Hey, man, you see me? I'm right lane. I'm a doctor name, I'm do road. Respect our manners, you see me? We respect everybody. Five of them, transport them. All of the people they were roll with me at their time. But you don't know, say, a tropical battery will big up our respect, most of all. Because while everybody else has stop, stop with, a tropical battery give it the start and give it the go. Visit us today at any store island-wide for unbeatable prices and best after sales services. Tropical batteries, stronger for longer since 1950. Diary of Kim, thought provoking, always smoking, lyrics like a bazooka. You are listening to Muta Baruka. <laughs> And when I answered it, it was Kojo Nambi, the journalist. And his words to me were, what are you doing? I said, just here at home. He said, you're sitting or you're standing. I thought it rather strange. I said, I'm actually lying in bed. He said, oh, good. He said, boy, did you just kill Walter? The Prime Minister of Jamaica, a black man, you know, he looks black anyway, he was approached with a request to learn African history and an African language so he be taught in the schools. And he said, no, we can't have any of that. He gave some reason, a curious reason, something about there being so many different races in Jamaica. Very curious. I mean, 95% of the people are black. But he can't teach an African language. On a Sunday morning, there could be 200, 300 people just sitting around. He was expelled from Jamaica um, uh, because um, the intelligence services um, uh, reported to uh, their political bosses um, that he was um, um, conspiring with um, Rastafarians to uh, attack tourists. Um, and it was on that basis, in fact, that the Jamaican cabinet uh, met uh, in October 1968 and declared him persona non grata. When Walter Rodney was banned from Jamaica in 1968, the Manleys were silent and they were complicit in the ban. And Michael Manley, even when he was a radical, as a socialist, never lifted the ban from Walter Rodney. They were accumulating weapons, they were accumulating you know, equipment of various kinds. A certain amount of that was coming from the, from the military. Whenever someone is about to make a gift to you of a Beretta, you, you can't send someone to collect it. This is what CLR, I think, was attempting to say. What Warren was hoping is that the anti-personnel bomb, because it was a walkie-talkie, that Walter would have somebody close to the whole part of his body, and it blew his head off, so he couldn't be identified, and he could have played a game which he had planned to play. The Walter and the dead man, he was going to Africa, this man is around the country, even though maybe got his passport. I think, you know, I think Burnham was so um, insensitive, but that was the scenario. I have actual faith in the truth. The only eyewitness of the brother of the late Dr. Rodney, who said that the car was parked, uh, said that they had obtained illegally uh, a walkie-talkie, and they were fiddling with it. Well, it's left to your prejudices. So, whether you believe it's a walkie-talkie, they were attempting to uh, obtain. And then further, significantly, they were parked near the chain, you know. Uh, now, uh, what complicity do we have in it? But my position is that Walter death is a political assassination, that Walter's death must be seen as something positive, and if the government wants to hold on and bear the body, they can bury themselves.
Fiery FM. Thought provoking. Thought provoking. Always smoking. Lyrics like a bazooka. You are listening to Muta Baruka. Dealt with comprehensive and closure provided in this matter. With those words, the government's chief spokesperson, Dr. Roger Lundgren, announced the reason President Donald Ramatar intends to rope in international experts to probe the death of Dr. Walter Rodney 33 years ago. Dr. Rodney, known as a historian and political activist, was killed on June 13, 1980, when a bomb exploded in the car he was traveling in. He was 38 years old at the time. Rodney's brother, who suffered injuries during the explosion, claimed that an army officer named Gregory Smith had given Rodney the bomb which killed him. Smith escaped to French Guyana, where he died 11 years ago. There have been claims that Rodney's assassination was set up by the government of Forbes Burnham, whom Rodney was opposed to. Burnham's party, the PNC, continues to vehemently deny those allegations. The current government believes that the matter of how exactly Rodney was killed and by whom needs to be settled once and for all, and his family is the one coming up with the information that fueled the decision of the president to set up the International Commission of Inquiry. The family has presented and is presenting substantial arguments for this matter, his murder, his assassination, to be inquired into definitively and to bring an end to the speculation that surrounds the cause, involvement, and of course motives. After his assassination, Rodney received several honors. Among them, in 1993, the government of Dr. Chaddy Jagan posthumously gave Rodney the country's highest national award, the Order of Excellence, and the Walter Rodney Chair in History was established at the University of Guyana. For Capital News, Neil Marks. Yes, Walter Rodney is in the news again, because there is a commission that is put, has been put in place to examine this assassination and the events surrounding this killing of one of Africa's great Pan-Africanists who came to Jamaica and grown with the Rastafari region and sits in them. Now, the thing about it that I used to go to school when I hear about this thing. And I remember you last and Shira. And we have to talk about you last and Shira. It was the blackest prime minister that Jamaica had ever seen. Even though when he leave office, he was very, very brown. I don't know how the man there start out in a one color and reach a next color, but apart from that, well, those of you who don't know him, who name you last year right now, get a $5,000 bill. Cause the man they gone for all money, you know. Get a $5,000 bill and you will see who name you last year. Walter Rodney, a lot of ones who listen to this program might not know who is Walter Rodney. There is a book, his famous book, How Europe Underdeveloped Africa. Big, 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 big book when we are going to school. Because a them book that we are reading when we are going to school in a them time there. Teenager youth, them are read them book there. How Europe Underdeveloped Africa. And my valiku one him ground in with my brothers. And I know that Rupert Lewis wrote a book about him. But we want to just say it's ironical that the blackest prime minister where Jamaica ever saw was the one that was responsible for not even realizing 
that the people in Jamaica were of African stock. So when the call was made for an African language, it was a no-no. As a matter of fact, it was you last Shira who banned all black books referring to blackness and Africanness in the island. I remember we had to throw away a whole heap of book down the gully because just as we moved it out of the place. And we can't call the man them name now because it's gone long time. Remember Ben Brody, remember Laxley Comrie, remember Julian Jingles. And as a school youth, me have moved amongst them, man, there. And when the cry goes, say, they are going to raid the place. We did have to move out the book, them. Because the police catch you with them book, they like them catch you with ganja. Them book, they get banned. The autobiography of Malcolm X. We tear off the cover off of the, the book and put one little novel cover upon it. That's when we are reading it. People believe there's a little love fiction we are reading, not knowing that it was the autobiography of Malcolm X. We couldn't wear any colors that look like Marcus Garvey color under the blackest prime minister. The blackest prime minister banned the books them that was deemed to be dealing with blackness because in a freedom thinking, Jamaica is a out of many one people country. Therefore, there was no need. Just like how we say, a young politician named Damian Crawford come now and say there's no need for a black history month. This thing is a perpetual thing, you know. It's a perpetual thing. Because I know that Damian Crawford, in a Jewish Syria time, maybe never born, I was a little boy. And now him come echo one of the same sentiments that Black History Month is relevant in America. It's not relevant yet. So Shira said, African language is not relevant here. Well, if the people are asking why we want to learn, why we want to change the name to African name and we are Jamaican, not realizing that Macintosh is an Irish name when none of we have any connection with. We want to talk to Brother Wazir Mohammed. Good night. Hi, good night. How are you doing? Uh, just giving a little preamp to the conversation here because we was a very young we was very young when this Walter Rodney thing rung up in a Jamaica and that is the blackest prime minister that Jamaica has ever seen you last year who banned every book that deal with black remember black power by Stokely Carmichael was banned the autobiography of Malcolm X was banned and all of these books was banned and Walter Rodney was And Walter Rodney was also banned by the same Prime Minister. Okay, so 30 odd years after, we say that this is a setup here now that is going to investigate and try to come to grips and understand the events that took place in that time. Tell me how it going to work. Or how they going to work this. Well, the... The, um, there is a three-man um, commission that has been set up, three-person commission, um, headed by um, a Barbadian jurist by the name of um, Cheltenham. Um, on it is another Trinidadian jurist by the name of Sinat Jairam. And then there is a Jamaican jurist, uh, the woman, um, um, Brown. Um, so they're sitting in Guyana. They're their first session this week. Um, they're meeting for four days this week. Um, they began on Monday. Tomorrow being, today being May Day, they're not going to meet today, but they're going to conclude their first session on Friday. And then they said that they're going to meet again at the end of May. Um, I don't know for how long. Yeah. But they're taking, um, evidence from witnesses 
um, who um, have something to say about the events that led up to the assassination of Walter Rodney. Um, so that is what is going on. I mean, the commission is an, is, a, is, a, is, a, is meeting publicly. The hearings are streamed live on the internet. It's open to the public. Okay, yeah, tell us. Um, okay, it, 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 yes. Oh, oh, yeah, oh we'll go about that. Oh, go get it. Well, you can get it. It's streamed live on the internet on um, NCN Television Guyana dot dot com. NCN, okay. NCN, Guyana. Yeah. NCN National Communication Network of Guyana yeah. Television. Anybody can um, Google that on the internet and be able to access the live stream. Right. Um, I could, I mean, I have shared, I could send you a link for that yes. um, by email. Okay. Um, so if you send me an email. Yeah, you can um, send it. And, and we can be reached at justice for for Walter Rodney at gmail.com. Okay, justice for Walter Rodney at gmail.com. That, yes, yes, is one word, justice for Walter Rodney at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. We have established an, uh, an international um, committee to, um, to educate people and to bring pressure um, on this commission to ensure that it does its work. Yeah. All right. Really? So we call. Yeah. yeah. No. Continue. Continue. So we are calling on all friends of Walter Rodney, friends of social justice, people who are interested in the future of the working people, to pay attention to this process. Yeah. All right. Any member of the public, anybody, any organization, any institution. Um, can access the commission, can write to the commission of inquiry. Mm -hmm. The commission of inquiry's email address is Walter Rodney Secretariat at gmail dot com. Okay, all right. Let me ask you a question now. Mm -hmm. Mr. Burnham has been pointed at over the years. Mm -hmm. um, most people have come to that conclusion in their mind that it was the government that did this terrible act. Mm -hmm. How do we get a clear understanding of it, considering well, that, that we have already put that in our mind that is the government of Charles Burnham? Well, this investigation is supposed to get to the bottom of that. Yes. But, I mean, there are several um, questions that need, we need to ask. For instance? If there is a government in power and there is a crime in which a major figure is killed, then what is the government's responsibility is to ensure that its policing agencies mm -hmm. conduct a full investigation. Yes. Now, let me just, I mean, on the first day of testimony in the commission, the chief of the crime chief in the of the country who came to testify brought the police records. He said that there were ten files that the police kept on this matter, seven of which has disappeared. They cannot account for. Oh. Now, the chairman of the commission asked them, "Well, in Guyana, what do you do with with all files?" And they said, "Well, they handle files internally." and they dis destroy old files. And the chairman said, well, in a normal country, the old files, especially important files like this, would be sent to the National Archives. The problem here has to do with the failure of the state, and Barnum was in charge of the state, mm -hmm. of the government. Donald Rodney, Walter Rodney's brother, who was in the car at the time of the explosion, with him, was able to report that the device, whatever the device was, mm -hmm. was given to Walter Rodney by a member of the Guyana Police. of the Army yes, yes. by the name of Gregory Smith. Now, he fingered Gregory Smith from day one of this, of this 
um, killing. Mm. And the police has failed or failed on the Burnham to bring a charge against Gregory Smith um, when everyone knew where he was, that he had been, um, he had gone over to French Guyana and was living there in exile. Mm. Um, and that is where he died. Okay. So the, the, the question of whether Burnham is responsible or not, or who is responsible, will be the, um, will have to come out of this inquiry. But the questions that we have to ask is, why didn't the government under him yes. try to bring Gregory Smith so that he can answer the questions yes. that needed to be asked in any police investigation. Yes. All right. But, all right, we, we, we've seen something happen 30 odd years ago, and now we've seen that they're doing this thing. What is, is, is it just a matter of going to a thing to say, okay, now we know what happened, and that is it. What, what, what we intend to get out of it more than the gratification that we went to the bottom of it and now we know that this is what it's supposed to be. Well, this is not about gratification that yeah. brings out the nature of the state, the nature of policing agencies, the way that they deal with people mm. in countries like this. Yes. Jamaica too. Um, we, we have a big problem yeah. with that in Jamaica. Right. Maybe so bigger than Guyana too. Yes. Yes. So, I mean, it is the nature of the way the police operate. Yes. The nature, and we have to address those structures. Because people, I mean, you know, Walter Rodney was killed 34 years ago. Yes. But then the, that, that structure of the police continues to exist. And the nature of that system mm -hmm. is there. And investigations like this help us to be able to address that, those structural problems. Yes. yes. So uh, how long do you think that this exercise will take place? Or what this will... exercise, I can't, uh, the way it is going, and it is going very slow, Okay. Um, it will be several months, if not, if not a, a year or more. Yes. I would assume, from the pace it is going, um, because they have a lot of work to do. Yes. It's 34 years. Um, many witnesses would not have been living in the jurisdiction anymore. Yes. Many wit important witnesses would have died. They have to piece together the evidence. Mm -hmm. um, and we are operating in a situation where... Um, in a country where record keeping is not is not that good. Yes. So is, um, is, is, it that, is it that all of this inquiry will take place in Guyana? Are there is sessions that will be outside of Guyana? Well, we who have formed the Justice for Walter Rodney Committee, which includes people from Jamaica and people from Trinidad and Barbados and and, and um, Tanzania and Kenya and. Canada and different countries of the world and Guyana. Um, we have written to the commission and we have said, look, um, you know, given the fact that more Guyanese are living abroad yes. than are living at home, yes. and given the fact that so many people migrated because of the political situation in the country in, in that period, it might be wise, the best thing for you to have hearings Mm -hmm. in the Caribbean, hearings in North America, and hearings in Europe. Mm -hmm. They have written to us and said that at the moment, they're not contemplating any hearings outside of Guyana. Oh, yeah? But that they're, but that, and this would be good for your listeners, that they would be prepared to receive testimony from anyone from any part of the world via Skype or other audio devices. Okay, okay. So if there is someone in Jamaica uh, among your listeners who believe that they need to address this commission, they could actually send a, a, a letter to the commission at the email address I give you, mm -hmm. Walt Rodney Secretariat okay. yeah. at gmail.com, and say, look, I have something to contribute to this inquiry. Mm -hmm. And 
but I cannot travel to Guyana. Okay. What arrangements can we make so that I could speak to you and give evidence? All right. This and they said that they, they're willing to accommodate yeah, witnesses what? like that. All right. The, 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 the family of um, Walter Rodney, mm -hmm. what is their position in relationship to the commission? Oh, they are fully in support of the commission. Okay. And, and they, they have lawyers representing. Uh, yes, the they have lawyers representing. Yeah, they feel that it is, it is possible to actually get to the bottom of it. Because we in Jamaica, we don't trust these commissions. So we just we want to well, try to find out if in uh, Guyana. Well, not, the people in Guyana also don't trust commissions. Okay. <laughs> so we have to look at these. That is why we have to be vigilant. Yes. Yeah. That is why we have formed the Walter Rodney, the Justice for Walter Rodney Committee, mm -hmm. to get people to be vigilant. Yes. To have programs like this that that talks about what is going on, that put public pressure on the commission to do its work. Mm -hmm. It is why we have asked the commission to invite international observers. Okay. To invite the Caribbean Bar Association, the Guyana Bar Association human rights groups. If there are human rights groups in Jamaica, um, your listeners should ask them. Mm -hmm. So, to uh, tell the commission Get involved, yes. that we want to be involved. Yes. What we want to see is groups saying to this commission, we have an interest and a stake in this inquiry. Yeah. So, if your listeners, people listening to this program, know of people who are involved in, in the Bar Association, in human rights and social justice groups, mm -hmm. then they should ask those groups to write letters to the Commission. Of course. Yes, saying that we want to pay attention to what you're doing and we want to be given observer status. Yes. yes. To observe what, what you're doing. You All right. And We're anybody can write to the Walter Rodney Secretariat at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. All right, let, let's just dress forward a little. And mm -hmm. there's, a, there's, a, there's a group of people that I know listen to this program that they never born when Walter Rodney get assassinated because they is, it mm -hmm. is 30 at year old. So they might well, figure I was, they must I might, was only 22. Well, they never born. <laughs> so, right. All right, so it, 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 they might be hearing and say, so who the matter about? Who named Walter Rodney? Can you give us a little synopsis of who is Walter Rodney? Why should we be interested in Walter Rodney? And why should young people now grasp this as part of their struggle in relationship well, to something that happened before them born? Why, why, who well, is this Walter Rodney really? Walter Rodney was a guy in a scholar. He came from very humble beginnings, from his parents who were working people. So he's a normal person. He was a normal person who got a guy in a scholarship um, and who went to London to study. And he studied at the school of at London, at London, University of London School of Oriental and African Studies. So he concentrated his studies on, on, on the condition of the African people. Mm -hmm. And so one of his major works is what is called How Europe Underdeveloped Africa. In that book, he showed what colonialism did to Africa and how the development of Europe has to do with the underdevelopment of Africa. That Africa is underdeveloped because Europe is developed, because the wealth, he explained the, the, the process through which wealth is transferred mm -hmm. from ordinary people to rich folks, from Africa to Europe. So in that book, he also explained the damage that the slave trade did to the African continent. By the way, Africa is only now recovering from the hemorrhage of people that came as slaves. Yeah. Africa is now recovering its population after, I mean, so many hundred yeah, years yeah, after yeah, slavery. Yeah, yeah. So Walter Rodney is an important...
important figure because because he his and, and his work is still relevant so he, he he studied the conditions in africa and the condition of african people as as people who have been oppressed and marginalized yeah. so he came to to um to teach at the university of the west indies and while he was at the university of the west indies in the late 60s he was he would because he is not he never confines himself to the university itself mm-hmm. so he was grounding with the with the what is called grounding with his brothers mm-hmm. in the in the poor communities of 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 jamaica and because he was teaching ordinary working people so how to understand the, the their oppression why they why they're suffering the government of jamaica on the ushera decided to ban him from jamaica so he could not work in jamaica and then he attempted to return to guyana to work and he got an appointment to the university of guyana and the government of guyana decided that also he he is a born guyanese decided to rescind his appointment to the university of guyana so they said that you cannot work in Guyana also mm. and but but as a Guyanese citizen although they they denied him that opportunity to work in Guyana he remained at home and he began to teach the working people in Guyana about the reasons why they are oppressed mm. why their condition is bad Wasn't he at one and time in teaching in, in Tanzania? Wasn't he one time in Tanzania? He was also one time in Tanzania at yeah. the University of Dar es Salaam. Yeah. So he is this great African scholar um, that young people, students need to pay attention to. There's a lot of information out there. In fact, in relation to, to, to Jamaica, There is a little booklet that is produced by some of his lectures in Jamaica mm-hmm. called Grounding with, with My Brother. Brothers. Yes, very very important. And, and 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 students, young people who were not born in that period need to read that book. You can google that book. It is not expensive. And every young child who wants to know who this man Walter Rodney was. Yes. Yeah should get a copy of grounding with my brothers definitely and i i would recommend oh you were on a develop africa because when i was going oh it's school, a fantastic book when i was going to school that's when i read it in school that's where i read it and not part of the curriculum but extra curriculum activities that we participated in as you i just read something on the internet today hey. we were a young girl in an african country I think she is about in her 20s now. Mm-hmm. She said that after she read how Europe on the developed Africa for the first time. Mm-hmm. She said she cried for three days. Mm-hmm. This is how it affects people. The book is 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 old but does is not getting old. No. So for university students University students and they should force their professors to, to 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 order that book and have them read it in their classes. I agree. I agree. Uh, and you know, students and professors need to ensure that that book, How Europe on the Developed Africa, is studied because it, it is now so relevant as the divide between rich and poor continues to expand. Walter Rodney's work becomes important because we can only solve these problems by studying work from people like Walter Rodney. Yes. 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 All right. So we see this commission and we're hoping for something good to happen. We hope that it will take the, the right course or the course that we feel you know oh, it and, you know you over the week since you had since uh, the finance minister mentioned it There's a lot of alabalu that have taken place all different parts of the the society came out and today we say him draw back that 
tax thing and say, all right, I'm not going to worry with that. So public pressure is very important to the public direction pressure, where you want it to go. Must, the public must pay attention. Yes, yes. We have also established a, a, a group page on Facebook called Justice for Walter Rodney. And we invite people to join that group and join that discussion. Because on that page, we're putting the proceedings as it goes, the, the podcast of the proceedings every day. Yes. You see? Yes. And, and, and people can access that in one place wherever they are in the world. Okay. All right. So, so we also invite people to join us on Facebook. The page is called Justice for Walter Rodney yes. on Facebook. Justice for Walter Rodney. Yes. All right. Because we, that's how we bring people together, yeah. social media across the world. Um, and, and what we have to do is continue to share information, build these platforms, and recognize. Because Walter, Walter Rodney's message was that when the working people joins together, that is the only time the leaders will, 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 will pay attention. Mm -hmm. But he says, first of all, we have to join together so we can't discriminate against each other. Yeah. But we have to give each other solidarity. And, and that, the reason he was killed in Guyana is because he represented unity of the working people. He, he, because he represented that coming together of, of the main group of the population who are East Indians and the single largest minority of the population who are African Guyanese. Yes. And he brought those two groups together. And that represented a new power. And that is why they had to kill him. Because of that newfound power in the society. Because he represented that unity. And that is why Yushira had to ban him from Jamaica. Because he represented that power where he was able to bring working people together to struggle in their own defense. You know, that is the importance of Walter Rodney. It, it, it's ironical that Walter Rodney assassination and Maurice Bishop assassination seem to follow the same trend in relationship to social and political order that was changing at the time. Because they represented a new yes. order. Yes. It is the new, where the killing of these people has to do with killing that new order. Yes. yes, yes. And what young people need to understand is that we have to study the works of these people yes. in order that that new order will live within us and flower and blossom. Yes. You see? And so when we say Walter Rodney lives, that is what we mean. I mean, of course, of course. That 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 the ideas should live in young people. Yes. And so I would invite the young people who are listening to this program to study the life and work of Walter Rodney. Yes. Um, Professor um, Rupert Lewis from the University of the West Indies at Moana yes. has written a book on Walter Rodney. Yeah, we're going to feature that book next. Yes. We're going to feature it next with an interview he that book, he did. Which carried a lot of Walter Rodney's speeches. Yeah. Yeah. You see? Okay. But there is a, a tradition and, and young people should, people should, um, should access these, these, these writings and let, and study them so that we can understand that that future yes. should not be allowed to, to be killed yes. and destroyed and done away with. Because we need a new type of leadership. The leaders that we have now, they are leaders that represent Wall Street and the banks. The IMF and the World Bank. And the IMF yes. and the World Bank. Yes. They don't represent ordinary working people. No way. No way, Jose. We don't have we don't have leadership in any part of the Caribbean that represents the working people. Mm. They represent the interests of the bank and the ruling class. Yes. Walter Rodney and Maurice Bishop was against the banks and the ruling classes. Yes. 
and wanted the working people to have a stake in the in, in, in the society and accessing the resources of the society. That is why they believed in self-emancipation, in the working people taking power and emancipating themselves from the shackles that that holds the these colonialism societies. and yes. neo-colonialism, as we call it. Well, it, you know, I don't like to use those big terms <laughs> because, because I mean, those terms it has to do with oppression. Yeah, well, that's what that's what's happening now. These these governments are neo-colonialists. You know, I mean, the new new colonial the, masters. They they they're represent a new kind of imperialism. Yeah, that's why I would say neo-colonialism. They, they are they are business managers of global capital. Yeah. You know, the new the governments are business managers of global capital. Mm. That's their first boss. The people who vote for them. They have no real, real relationship to the people who vote for them. I mean, so that is what they represent. I mean, and you look at all the budget yeah. produced by all the governments, all the programs. What are they doing? I mean, country after country in the Caribbean. I mean, can ordinary workers travel from country to country freely mm. in the Caribbean? No. Only business people can travel freely. But you know, no, we have a sticky wicket here now. We are the Minister of Finance, Peter Phillips, was part of the the attack on the government of Jamaica for not allowing Walter Rodney to be here. He was one of the radicals in that time who was yeah. against this idea of banning Walter Rodney. Now he's part of that structure that Walter Rodney was fighting against. It's right, really because they become, trapped, they become trapped in the structure. Yeah. They become trapped in the structure because they, they, there is no political movement of the working people with mm. ideas about change mm. and how to change that structure. Where are the, the political movements from the ground up? Mm. What has happened to the movements that develop in the 1970s right. and in the 1980s? They got, they, the, they, they got gulped up by the CM system that was supposed to be well, that it was supposed to be against. Because most they of were the people, swallowed up by this. System. Yeah, most of the people that we see now in government was right. part of that. Where are these people that were supposed yes, to have changed it? Yes. As yeah. a youth, yeah. Yeah? yeah, I came to Jamaica in 1978 as part of a youth delegation on the way to the World Youth Festival in Cuba. And there were hundreds and hundreds of Jamaican youth that were participating in that process of change and understanding change. Where are these movements now? Yeah. You see? Yes. Where are these movements now? And the, 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 the issue here is what happened to the communities and the resources of the working people? What happens to the land? Who, what happens to the community businesses? Yes. You see? Yes. And that is where the problem is, is, is the structure and the nature of of the uh, of the way the government operates. Yes. I mean, how involved are the communities in 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 change, change. and yes. programs? Yes. Well, we give thanks. We give thanks for the, the words, and we give thanks for the understanding. You know, I mean, very important that we do this because, as we said, there's a lot of people who listen to this program that don't have a clue about. What we're talking about are who's Walter Rodney. So we give thanks for you well, to shed you know, some light on, on the world, you know, yeah, we, commission so we call people. We call on everyone to be vigilant mm. and to pay attention. Yes. You know, write a letter to the newspaper. Mm -hmm. Why Jamaicans can't write letters to the newspapers in Guyana and saying, we are paying attention to this stuff? Yes. You know? Well, this, this, in, this, this conversation is part of the process that we feel that 
should be done is in place. So we do it because we know that it will gather momentum because of what we are doing now, you know. Right, and right. We call on people. Let's take action. Yeah. Let us take action, you know, and let us be vigilant. Yeah. And let us write letters. Let us get involved on Facebook and social network platforms. Yeah. Write to the commission. All these things need to be done. Yeah. You see? Okay. All right, give time. I mean, give, no, all right, no, what, say, say what you was going to say. I mean, take for instance, I mean, Walter was part of the faculty at the University of the West Indies. Yeah? Yeah. I, I don't see any reason why the faculty or uh, the faculty at the University of the West Indies should not write yeah. to the commission yeah. and say we are paying attention. Yeah. The Chief Justice of Kenya, yes, yeah. has written to the commission and saying, look, I was a student of Walter Rodney, mm. and I am paying attention to what you're doing. You see, that is what is needed. Yeah. People need to write and say, we're paying attention to what you're doing. Okay, sir. And people should write to the Walter Rodney Secretariat at gmail.com. Okay, sir. Give thanks. Thanks. Yeah, man. That, that uh, is very, very important. Give thanks. That is Wazir Mohammed, Associate Professor of Sociologist, Indiana University, WPA political activist, and colleague of Walter Rodney. Sing, yes, it's way more. Uh, this is the Coach in Asian RFM, you know, we I mentioned a while ago, Peter Phillips, as part of that in you know, the 60s, radical force, you know, that farm groups, and different body of people to really demonstrate against the Prime Minister at the time for his move against Walter Rodney. And years after that, when he was the Minister of Security, National Security, we hear Peter Phillips mention that Carol Garden Carol Garden and um Henry him say the government cannot afford to really allow these things to take place in Jamaica. The government cannot afford to to allow these things. But we not tell the government to allow things still. But given who he was supposed to be at the time, and given that we know, say, Carol Garden wasn't the, 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 the it's not Rasta, it's not Rasta cause it, it's the society, it's the system that was placed there against the, the, the people who do have any land, and who reclaim land to make some living and to feed them children. The attack on the landless is the same attack that we get for years, even in slavery. It was not the Rastafari community that created that what they call upheaval against the, the society, the, 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 the government. The state attacked the, 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 the Rastafari and then years after, we hear the Minister of Security and Justice under Peter Phillips denouncing Carol Garden. And you know, if you denounce Carol Garden, you know, you have to denounce Paul Bogle. And you have to denounce Sam Sharp. Yes. You have to denounce Sam Sharp, denounce Paul Bogle. Maybe just go and denounce and denounce, denounce reggae music, denounce Rastafari. So it's a serious problem when you start to excuse yourself as a jacket and tie man now. And then we say, Shira, we are told that 
Well, everybody's supposed to know. Well, I don't know if that book that's still there, a Jamaica, you know, The Black Beauty. For those of you who don't know, this book, this book named Black Beauty. Black Beauty is about a black horse. A very beautiful black horse. The problem with it is that because you last and Shira never read enough. The idea of black beauty was not acceptable. So all that book was banned. <laughs> <laughs> people are easy, take them easy. You take them people are easy. You know, it, it's like when you reach a certain position, you know, the system just grab you, you know. Sometimes you feel that you work against the system by going into the system. I realize that. The system is more powerful than you did ever think. And then in a twinkling and a fa half an eye, you know, you don't metamorphosize, you don't change. And you don't even realize they change, you know. And so the system grab you, you know. That you in the system a claim say a fight for the poor and a fight for justice and equal rights. But in truth and in fact, you're fighting to maintain the same oppressive system. And you behaving like a schizophrenic person where you, 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 you sometimes talk for the poor, but then round the corner now, you put on some tax for some things to make the poor get poorer. You sometimes talk for the poor about justice, but you have a group of men round there in a uniform where you shoot the people them who you're supposed to look justice for. And it just keep going on and 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 on. But you know them say you push a dog around for so long, one day that dog will turn and bite you. I want to say it's biting time, yeah, so now we want to play this. Before we play the, the no, we could play the, you know, we're going till 3 o'clock. <laughs> Did I tell you that we're going till 3 o'clock? We're going till 3 o'clock. So go get your black coffee, go get your, your, your matches stick for all of your eye. You know, I mean, anything where you think sex can make you stay up. We know say upper man put on them pot of food there right now. A bubbling food, you know them way there. So we all go till three o'clock. But I wanna play this thing here. I anxious to play it. Because it shows you the how evil the system is. And when you say you're gonna try to go into the system for change things, you become part of that evil. You understand? I remember when me a youth, teenager youth, I come up. Cause we never had no communism business, you know. We no, and no communism we are work with. Marcus Garvey and Rasta, we are project Rasta's youth in our school, and you know, Marcus Garvey's son, the demons we, we go a Yemijes Garvey house, twelve Mona Road, and we just a move, black power. Marcus Garvey, and then Rasta Fire just come grab we. But remember that them days there, you know, when you hear about Castro, you know. It's like a devil that, you know, it's like, if, if, if you want to know the incarnation of the devil in the Bible, it was 90 miles away from Jamaica. That was Fidel Castro. And remember also that there was a war that was going to start during the time of Kennedy against Cuba, because Cuba and Russia was in cahoots. School Cuba and Russia was tight. As a matter of fact, a whole heap of the economical support came from Russia to Cuba. But them, them build up so much things against Cuba, you know, that there's no way anybody will associate with Cuba. I remember the first time I had left Jamaica for go up on any tour was with Jimmy Cliff. And at that time it was Siaga in a power and Siaga say, any oh, we go, you know say. I, I, I mark over the pathway. It's like a it's like a goose of business. <laughs> like <laughs> dogo. Dogo. And we are say, but we are artists. I mean, you know. The whole we go. Jimmy Cliff and him and me included, we go there. Perform and come back 
people say them not go because them, them not get an American visa and all these things. We get around that too, because we get around it by saying them not, them not stamp a passport. Because them also understood the repercussion that would take place. So them not stamp a passport when we reach in a, when we reach in a Cuba. We go through Havana, they never stamp it. The custom never stamp it. You understand? But it's a serious thing. It's a serious thing because the things them that we hear about these people, they anti, what them call socialism, anti-communism stand that them take. That everybody become communist, even though you is not communist. And we see what happened to Michael Manley. In a them time, they also. So when we look from Walter Rodney, Maurice Bishop, where America, big, big America, invade little, little Grenada. Can you imagine that? Big, big America invade a little island named Grenada and create one big problem over there. Uh, that no secular, you know, that no secular yet. And then we see them assassinate Walter Rodney and bring in a guy named Jim Jones. You know, we write a poem about this poem, and in this poem we mention Jim Jones. A whole heap of people don't even know who was Jim Jones. But it's very important that you go find out these things, you know. Because these are the things that when we remember these things, you know, there's no way we can follow this, the, 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 this, the part of how the system work. Because we realize that the system is not for the people. The man named Jim Jones was a preacher. You know, the name of the Lord, he make about 300 odd people drink poison. In a Guyana, white man, go to Guyana, set up him divan that and that and that, and he was, he was placed there legally, and it became one of the biggest mass suicide ever. Mass suicide. Him, him make, a, him make three hundred odd people take poison, drink poison, and dead. That they make a movie about it, you know. They make a movie about it. This guy named Jim Jones. I will mention it in the poem. This poem shall speak of Jim Jones. You understand? The Ku Klux Klan riots in Brixton, Jim Jones. But these people use propaganda machinery for Devastate the minds of the people, like them come poison all the flower over here, so we don't know. Kill all the big tall coconut tree them, and make it look like a normal thing that happen. Like, like some disease take over the land, and them put the disease there. But why you go to your computer and Google a thing named Operation Northwood? Operation Northwood is a serious thing. Operation Northwood. I will want to play a little clip here. From this operation now too, and they will go back into Walter Rodney, but everything connected. Everything connected. <laughs> that the war in Syria. And if you believe that the war in Iraq and Afghanistan and Yemen and in the Congo and what took place in Burundi, what took place in Uganda, what took place in Grenada, what took place in Jamaica in the 70s. If you believe these things, it's not connected. You have a sad, 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 sad thinking. Yes, it's all connected. All connected. Today on Caribbean Nation, we continue our series on Caribbean personalities who have had a lasting impact on the course of Caribbean and world history. Our program today focuses on Walter Rodney, one of the Caribbean's foremost revolutionary thinkers. Assassinated in his native Guyana in June of 1980, Rodney's teachings and example have become a rallying force for social and political change across the world. 
Now we have the first comprehensive work on the life and thoughts of this brilliant son of Africa and the Caribbean, whose name is called in the same breath as Marcus Garvey, Toussaint Louverture, C.L.R. James, George Padmore, Stokely Carmichael, Eric Williams, Fidel Castro, and Che Guevara. Walter Rodney's intellectual and political thought is written by Professor Rupert Lewis, a political science lecturer at the University of the West Indies, Mona Campus in Jamaica. Well-researched and written, Professor Lewis's book is more than just a biography. It is an account of an important period of 20th century Caribbean history, sociology, and politics. So please join us as we speak with Dr. Rupert Lewis about his landmark book on the extraordinary Caribbean intellectual and revolutionary, Dr. Walter Rodney. Don't go anywhere. Ari of aim, thought-provoking, always smoking. Lyrics like a Today we focus on Walter Rodney, and I have with me in the studio none other than Dr. Rupert Lewis, a professor of political science, actually political thought, political thought. at um, the University of the West Indies in Mona. Uh, professor Lewis, we met a um, some time ago, a couple of months ago, at the Walter Rodney's conference um, in New York. And ever since then, I've been eagerly awaiting um, this book. Let's do the usual first and ask um, the questions that everybody will ask. That is, how um, you came to write this book on Walter Rodney? Well, David, the reason has to do with the students I teach. What you found in the 1980s is that although Walter Rodney was assassinated in June 1980, uh, the generation of students that I taught in the late 80s, even some Ghanaian students, did not really know very much about Walter Rodney, who he was, uh, what he stood for, what his writings were about. Some, of course, had encountered how Europe and developed Africa. Jamaicans knew about his uh the experience in 1968, October, when he was banned and there were mass demonstrations in Kingston. Uh, others, when I traveled to Tanzania, knew about his Tanzanian experience. And what I wanted to do was to put together the different facets of Walter Rodney's life into one book where people could examine him both in relation to his revolutionary political activity in Jamaica and Guyana and Tanzania, his connection with the African liberation movements, his work as a pioneer historian of Africa, of the Caribbean, uh, his work as an intellectual analyzing the contemporary Caribbean, the contemporary black world in relationship to Western imperialism. So to put together a portrait of Walter Rodney as a basis for a more comprehensive way of presenting him to a younger public. Uh, if I had been concerned exclusively with my own generation, it would have been a different, uh, kind of a book where you would, you're, you're working with people who shared your assumptions and shared your po political activities. But when you're working now with students who are removed from that, then you have to approach the text in a different way. And as time passes along, people are less familiar with the circumstances of the 60s and 70s, with the personalities that emerge, and therefore you have to represent that experience, whether through Walter Rodney or through other revolutionary thinkers, in a way which enables the younger people to do their own uh, thing in relationship to how they assess the situation in the world in which they find themselves, how they draw out their own potential how the working people are aware of what has gone on before them. And what is important, what the run is important idea of self-emancipation as a person coming from the working people himself and being very committed to his own class of people. I think this is what I try to do in the book, to enable people to understand in a comprehensive way the varied activities of Walter Rodney. Let me pin you down on this question that you raised in the very first sentence, and that is that... A number of Caribbean people, students, and never make a politician. able people to understand in a comprehensive way the varied activities of Walter Rodney. Let me pin you down on this question that you raised in the very first sentence, and that is that a number of Caribbean people, 
students and people in other sectors and sections of the society have very little knowledge of um, personalities who have played uh, important roles mm -hmm. in Caribbean history. Mm -hmm. The same can be said for CLR James, yes. and Norman Manley, Michael Manley, um, Chedi Jagan, um, you, you, you name them, George Patmore is hardly known hardly by Caribbean people. Mm -hmm. What do you think? What do you think accounts for this? I think it has to do with the continued colonial character of our educational system, even in the Caribbean. Although there's considerable work that has been done uh, books that are being published now, uh, never before have we had so many regionally published texts. Uh, there's still a need for continued uh, valorization of our own contribution to world culture, world civilization. And that sense is not easy to develop even among ourselves because there is this feeling of um, inadequacy. Uh, there's a feeling that we have not really contribute in the way that some of us are making out. Uh, there's this failure to be able to understand what are, what are the, the, the heritages that have shaped the modern period. And hence somebody like Pat Moore, who is so significant uh, for the Pan-Africanist movement in the mid-20th century, uh, is hardly known. And you run the risk of somebody like Walter Rodney not being known sufficiently uh, in the future. I teach a course called Caribbean Political Thought, where we try to engage that tradition, because the tradition is not, it's a Caribbean tradition, but it's also a global tradition, because it helps to shape Africa, it helps to shape people in Europe, it, it helps us shape a discourse and analysis and practical political activity, which we need to embrace as part of our response to the 21st century, and part of our way of helping to reshape our agenda. That's a heritage that we need to draw on. So that there's a continual struggle. For example, we're involved now in a in a program to teach Marcus Garvey in schools, uh, to make it more comprehensive. Uh, there are elements of it, but it's all part of the same uh, struggle to involve Walter Rodney and to try to shape an intellectual tradition, which is what I'm trying to contribute to in the book. And other people have done have contributed to that by virtue of their work on other individuals. But it is this self-conscious shaping of an intellectual tradition. And therefore, in the same way that the Europeans have done it, you go over the same people over and over again in order to be able to extract from their work the essential elements in order to fine-tune for, for their own purposes. We need to do that for our own thinkers who have really made enormous contributions. And what is so fantastic about the 20th century Caribbean thinkers, James, Padmore, Garvey, Rodney, Fanon, they have been uh, just not thinkers about the Caribbean region, but about the world. Mm -hmm. I mean, Rodney is probably better known in Africa mm -hmm. than he is in the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. in, in a sense, eh, they, they, they're, they're universal um, men and women mm -hmm. who have shaped not only the history of the, helped to shape not only the history of the Caribbean, but the history of the world. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think, again, what do you think accounts for this kind of product coming out of the Caribbean that goes onto the world stage and acts in the way that it, it, it is acting? I think what accounts there are two reasons. One is that um, small territories, in this case a, a small coastal part of the South American continent in the case of Guyana, but uh, being part of a wider framework because it was part of the framework of the British Empire. So you're connected to India, uh, you're connected to Africa by virtue of the populations that were placed on that small uh, coastal strip of land. So you're involved automatically with global issues. You're involved with Britain, you're involved with continental Africa, you're involved with uh, the Indian subcontinent. You're involved also with other parts of uh, the world, Chinese, Asia, Portuguese, people, and so on. And when you try to develop a program of reform, of change, you are involved with international issues. You can't help because these these territories have been projects of the European expansion over the last 500 years. So when you when you encounter this, you're also dealing also with the experience of whether Africans in Brazil 
for African Americans in the United States. You immediately see the similarities uh, and the similar agendas that one needs to develop in order to liberate uh, people, in order to develop a program of reform. So no matter what you touch, if you are to make a difference in the small situation, whether it's coastal, whether it is the continental coastal strip, or in the, the, the islands of the Caribbean, you are involved with global issues because the projects were the early form of globalization, uh, whereas we are now, as some people argue, in the second stage of globalization. Mm -hmm. We are products of that first globalization, uh -huh. and hence our, our world has been a very complex world, complex world of cultures, complex world of uh, economics, modern economic systems, complex world of trade relationship, complex world of racial uh, aggregations, as it were, mm -hmm. that are brought together in 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 this uh, uh, project uh, that Europe created. Rodney's early years in Guyana, born in 1942, um, so coming of age in what the 1950s. 1950s. Um, tremendous period in Caribbean history in general, but Guyanese history in particular. Mm -hmm. How this shaped the future, Walter Rodney? Well, it shaped it first of all in terms of the anti-colonial movement, uh -huh. uh, the movement led by the late Chedi Jagan and others, uh, the political ferment of the 50s and the repressive character of the colonial authorities in relationship to that movement. And Walter's parents are a part of that political uh, awakening and therefore his youth is shaped by these activist concerns, these concerns of trying to develop the consciousness, develop political activities. But it's also shaped by that period which is the end of colonialism and the opening up of educational opportunities for a large number of black and Indian people. And he takes advantage fully of the opportunities of scholarships going straight through to the uh, School of Oriental and African Studies and before that University of the West Indies. Uh, he takes full advantage of the educational opportunities that are now open with the early period of decolonization. So there's a combination there of intellectual awakening, of study, and the relationship between that and the political challenges of decolonization. That combination uh, is endures in, in Walter Rodney's life. So the Ghanese experience is extremely important because it brings onto the agenda of his mind this question of race, the question of black people, the question of the Indian population, the question of the way imperialism and the colonialists utilize racial division as a means of uh, making the populations that are colonized disunited and fighting against each other. He's engaged with those issues, the use of race for reactionary political purposes, and they need to challenge that particular agenda of race. So early from early in his life, there is an integration between his historical investigation and his... Uh, effort to connect to political struggle. Mm -hmm. And what is important about his period at University of West Indies is that in the early 60s, no African history is taught. He knows a lot about European history. He knows a, a lot about the Atlantic on this side of it, but nothing at all about Africa. And this is what is uh, impelling him to say, I need to know, and uh, sending him on this uh, investigation of the West uh, West African, uh, the African slave trade mm -hmm. and its impact on the modern world. Bonnie okay. goes to England, studies, become a PhD, became a PhD at 24, 24. 24 years, went to Africa for a short while. He went to Dar es Salaam in around the end of 65, 66, uh -huh. and he teaches there. Right. But his main intention uh, is really to return to teach at the University of the West Indies and to introduce Afri African history there. So he comes back to Jamaica. He comes back to Jamaica at the start of 1968. Uh -huh. But he doesn't get an opportunity to teach African history mm -hmm. uh, because that is aborted in mm -hmm. terms of the formal educational system. But he spends a lot of time in the inner city communities of Kingston uh -huh. and in the rural communities uh, reasoning with people, particularly the Rastafarians, learning from them and also letting them know about the changes that are underway in Africa, as well as uh, teaching them about pre-colonial African history, which was a major uh, topic of interest at the time, because this is important for people to understand, as we now have a better understanding of the 
fact that our history did not begin with the plantation, mm -hmm. did not belong with the, did not begin with the Colombian misadventure, that one has to understand that period prior to the slave trade, prior to the 15th century. Right. And he does a lot of work on African civilizations, African cultures, and he finds in the poor communities of Kingston, especially among the Rastafarians, a knowledge of these things, and there is an interaction. So although he doesn't get the opportunity to teach African history to students, he has these informal reasonings and lectures, uh, which are gathered, collected in the book, Ground Long Rules, My Brothers. Brothers. There are a couple of things here. On the international scene, Black Power is region here in the United States of America, or the parts of North America. But more importantly, here is a young academic, huh? going among poor people and talking to them about their blackness, talking to them about the Africanness. Mm -hmm. It's an affront to the ruling class in the mm -hmm. Caribbean mm -hmm. at that particular time. How did they react? They reacted very viciously. Uh, first of all, the use of the police, the use of in, in, informers, um, the banning of literature in Jamaica, they banned the biography of Malcolm X. They even banned a book called Black Beauty, which had no political significance, whatever, just because it had the word black in it. Uh, they banned all the writings coming out of Cuba. There was a ban on black literature, period, coupled together with a ban on communist literature. Mm -hmm. And Walter Rodney, along with some other students, had visited Cuba, and this made him a target for the uh, Jamaican government. Of course, this was the case with other governments as well, but more so the Jamaican government. So... Walter Rodney, after he, he attended a Black Writers con Conference in Montreal in October, and when he returned to Jamaica on our own October 15, uh, he was, uh, he was declared persona non grata. And when the students heard about this, they were upset because they were losing a lecturer who they liked. But unbeknownst to them, Walter Rodney had a constituency off the campus. So you had this constituency off the campus, who encountered for the first time this large number of go red gown students who went on the streets of Kingston to protest. And it is a convergence of the urban youth and the students which creates a new situation in terms of a mass demonstration that turns violent in Kingston. Mm -hmm. And um, there are casualties, uh, properties damaged, uh, but it creates a new political awareness in the region and has an impact uh, wider than Jamaica mm -hmm. and marks a turning point. It's, it's the beginning of the radical 70s, so to speak. But Rodney goes to Dar es Salaam. He goes Rodney back to Tanzania. goes not directly to Tanzania. Mm -hmm. He spent some time in Cuba. In, in Cuba. Okay. Uh, and apparently he wrote a, a, a manuscript which we have not been able to identify on the black struggle, reflecting on his experience. And certainly uh, we intend to follow up to pursue uh, that particular manuscript. He goes to England, and then he recycles in uh, University of Dar es Salaam mm -hmm. between 1969 and 1970. He wrote the seminal How Europe Underdeveloped Africa. He wrote Africa. the seminal How Europe Underdeveloped Africa. And the genesis of that text is very interesting in that it really develops as a set of lectures, lectures to the Tanzanian teachers, the History Teachers Association. He goes throughout Tanzania uh, discussing the problems that Tanzania faces in terms of trying to effect change. And he says that one needs to understand the problem in the broader way, in the concept, in the context of the European involvement with Africa over several centuries. And interestingly, he gives the manuscript to workers who are literate in English for them to read and to comment. And this is an indication of how seriously uh, Rodney took his the, the role of political education mm -hmm. among working people. And he did the same in terms of his discussions with people in Jamaica and in the bottom house meetings in Guyana, in Guyana. Or, or, or elsewhere. So this was a way, a way of operating. And hence, by 1972, we had his brilliant book, How Europe Undeveloped Africa. And he goes back to Guyana in 1974, expecting to get a job expecting at the University to get of Guyana, job. did not get a job. And what happens after then? Well, uh, he determines that he would not leave Guyana. He would stay. And he tried to get jobs even at the high school level and the dictatorial Paul Burnham bans him, prevents him from getting a job there. But he, de he decides to stay. He's not going to migrate. He doesn't take up offers elsewhere. And there are many offers. There are offers in Hamburg, 
the office in Canada, the office in the United States. He visits these places. He earns some money. He gets grants. He's able to research in the Ghanese archives. And he writes a very brilliant book on the history of the Ghanese working people, which is one of a fine historical work. And at the same time, he's involved with political activism in the Working People's Alliance. And this activism brings him and brings the working people into active confrontation with the Burnham regime. And it is to confirm from, from research that, that the Gregory Smith uh, was an agent of the state and was set up with this uh, bomb disguised as a walkie-talkie, uh, and which uh, was Walter's undoing, because when he tried out this uh, instrument, uh, it blew him apart. When America wants to know what's happening in the Caribbean diaspora, friendly game, and like clockwork, we working people generally. And he was uh, making a challenge to them. And this is the whole purpose of the energy he put into political education, the energy he put into giving them the confidence that they could take on the agendas of transformation because the promises made to them by the political class that had emerged uh, were promises that would found up on the class interests of the middle strata that was emerging in the Caribbean and who were using the state as a basis for their economic consolidation. Who were some of the influences on his um, political thought? Well, I would say that one of the key influences on political thought was Sailor James. Mm -hmm. And Sailor James, Walter had a great deal of respect for and was part of Sailor James's London study group in the mid-1960s. And Sailor James followed Walter's career throughout, mm -hmm. uh, corresponded with him. They had their differences, but I would put Sailor James as one of the critical Caribbean intellectuals. Mm -hmm. But I also mention a, another important Guyanese influence on, um, on Walter Rodney, and that is the late great mathematician and African scholar, Norman, Norman Cameron, Cameron yeah. who was one of Walter's teachers at Queen's College in Ghana, mm -hmm. and who tends to be uh, ignored. He's not well known, but he's a great classic scholar, a great mathematician, a great, great knowledge, great, he has great knowledge on African civilizations, and certainly that helped to shape Walter Rodney's early thinking on some of these topics. As we come to the end of the 20th century, the Caribbean and the rest of the developing world face a strong challenge to their very existence as independent sovereign states. In the course of meeting this challenge, the working people are as vulnerable as never before. Globalization, structural adjustment, ethnic and racial competition. The doom varies, but the story is the same. It is at times like these that we must call upon the best in us to guide and inspire our struggle. In this regard, Walter Rodney is more relevant today than ever. And Dr. Rupert Lewis has given him to us in the form of a brilliant book, Walter Rodney's Intellectual and Political Thought. As a disciple of Rodney and a believer in something called the Caribbean Nation, I highly recommend this book. Until the next time, I'm David Ayn, thanking you for tuning in to yet another edition of Carib Nation. And remember, as always, our on this book wants to be Fiery of aim, thought-provoking, always smoking, lyrics like a bazooka. You are listening to Muta Baruka. The Iron Continent with Muta Baruka. We are listening to the whole of it. In the air. Continent. The end. The end. Malvern earthquake will be hosting a Naya Bingi in Malvern to celebrate African Liberation Day. Malvern, St. Elizabeth. It was Monday we went up to the South African... Ambassadors resident, they had a function up there celebrating their 20th anniversary as a democratic state in South Africa. We know that South Africa has become part of what we call, you know, it was BRIC, but now it's BRICS. What is BRICS? BRICS is a group of emerging economies, countries, 
that has chosen to separate themselves from the normal traditional marketplace and to carve out something for themselves. This country are uh, these countries are called BRICS, B R I C S. It is Brazil, Russia, India, China, and now South Africa. And we get to understand that South Africa economy has shifted from being an Americanized economy into what we call now a brick economy, where this group of nations is coming together as emerging economical powers to do things that is outside of what we call the AU and the IMF and the World Bank and all these things. Cutting edge. Yeah, for those of you too young to know that is a team song from a movie, Jamaican movie named Countryman. Yes, big movie in a Jamaica. In the seventies, if I can I call Countryman. Yes, cutting edge. Greetings, Mota. Ah, bless him, man. Yeah, man. Program as they are saying, the colloquial, turn up. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. And we have to keep the pressure. We what have to mean, keep the pressure. Of course. Because it's like it's a relay we are run, and from Rodney and come right up. Mm. We have to manifest them work that Walter Rodney that put out there. Yeah. Because yeah. it, is, it is a fact how Europe had underdeveloped Africa. We know these things. Mm-hmm. The things that Marcus Gag was saying is that we must develop our own government, meaning our parallel system to the white world system. You see, the system of money with them I use now, it was conceptualized in 1946 after the, the Second World War. And in it, they had what they call the Bretton Woods system. You know, and these things... It's available, you know. Mm. We can read about it, how Jamaica joined the Bretton Woods system. That is the system of money that controls the world. Yeah. And these are the things that they used from them time that the IMF was brought into, into being. And there's no way we stay in that system and can prosper. And it shows you all of the countries, even European countries, will go under the IMF system. None of them have come out successful. None of them. None of Not them. Not one. No, 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 no. So it's an illusion when Peter Phillips has said, boy, we have to travel the whole length of this thing and pass and test them. It's nonsense. There's but you see, no but, but, way. But, but you know, that is where they definitely you know, make you pass test. It's like, it, it's like you take fencing. It's like tariff fencing. It's like you take watch out. You have to pass tests. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Because what the country is going through now is madness. There is no way you can use paper to create more money that you can get yourself out of it. And even the taxation will not help. Mm. The only answer is the, the land, the production, and this is why they want to keep I and I from land. Yeah. Even Pinnacle, you know, is a, is a serious thing with Pinnacle. When they want to move that land away from I and I to say, this land is legally yours. It's enough land, them rob, you know. Them rob the land from the Maroon, them, you know, because the Maroon, them own the land from Falmouth to, to, to Black River, you know. Yeah, and them cut it out. Yeah, man, take away the beach part. And them take away the whole of them land there, you know. Yeah. One the bowlers in a St. Catherine again, you know. Mm. It's another 5,000 acre property with them steel. Yeah. And we see it happening over and over until the people rise up and know, say, listen, we must control the rains and the wealth in Jamaica. Bank of Jamaica did a survey and show, say, it's five percent of the population control ninety five percent of the wealth of the country. Five mm. percent, 
under five percent they come back out of the same when we are youth we hear about the twenty one family mm-hmm. we run Jamaica. Yeah. That five percent represent that family. And that is where the wealth stay. Now we have to look again now how they manipulate the people, you know. Every time you have the election come. It's the same big man get the two part of their money, you know. Ten million for run election. Mm. Ten million to PNP, ten million to JLP. Cause them is not loyal to no party. Mm. They are giving equally that whoever win know that they must get them kicked back. Of course. Get back them ten million. So when the ten ten times ten. Yeah, yeah. So when the government contract them are run, it's them man they get it first. When you look at Matalan, them say Matalan build the, the most house in Jamaica. Matalan don't build one house. It's I and I, the tradesman, them that build the house. Matalan get the claim. Take the claim fee. Mm. And get the monies. Because all of them workers that will work on the house don't own a house. So it's them things that now we have to realize, say, we have to now create that transference of wealth from the few to the masses and that is our work you know cut out where we and where, yeah, when i say we that's the marcus Giave people's political party have to convert that transference of wealth into the hands of the people and it's true certain form of reasoning education and as walter rodney said the groundation of the people so that they can be aware of what is happening. So you've been having meetings around the island, Bridget? Yeah, man, yeah, man. We, all weekend, we go out to the country, man, and meet with the people and talk with them, man. Same groundation, man. Same okay. vibe. Okay, okay. No, no big political meeting and stand up on platform and them thing. Mm. Go up on the corner, go in the community, go up on the farm. Right now, we are develop a five farm. We are develop right away, you know. Oh, yeah? And we are named them in an African name, you know. Our farm named Ghana. Rasaimo, them have a farm, live up that has Zimbabwe. Which part of them farm are there? Right around the island. We have St. Mm. Thomas, St. Catherine. So where they pan it now? Where, 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 where they pan it now? Okra, Kalalo, yeah. banana, planting, coffee, portion of, of crops we have. Yeah. Now, we want to develop the, the, the medicinal plants now. So we have 200 seedlings of the um, Moringa. Mm. Because we know that health is one of the greatest things. Greatest wealth. Health is the greatest wealth. Thank you. Mm. We see the Minister of Health just allocate two, must say two billion dollars for fight cancer. Mm. No, we are talking about the preventative medicine. Yes. Them are wait till you get sick, then them fight it, you know. Yeah, yeah. Talk about prevention is better than to cure it. Thank you. Preventative medicine. So mm. we are going to put in these nutraceuticals that you don't get the cancer. Yes, yeah. So these are the levels where we depend. One other thing I'd like to keep reminding the people about the name change in ceremony that we yeah. want to know. We have for the 100 years of the UNIA, yeah. we want 100 mm-hmm. persons mm-hmm. with a name, name change in ceremony. Yes. It will, it will take place, I think, tentatively we have um the medallion hall. Well, I am in that, in that, you know, because, you know, as we, from the beginning, we did that gay out African names from this program. We have it yes, 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 from them yeah, time yeah, there. Because African names to today's children, and we always remind the people that if you have a, if, at any young youth who is under 20 or 20 and have an African name, more than likely is this program naming. Yeah, you? man, yeah, man. Well, you know? I have done some survey because, you know, as a GAP, I sign a lot of documents and a youth come to me with an African name. I'm saying, where you get that name there? Why am a father like me? Why am a father as a Ross, you know? Yeah. Used to listen to Muta. So yeah, we know it's working. But wait, we never know you are JP, Bridget. Now me look for JP all the time. But wait, eh. Now me look for JP all the time. I can't find JP right now. You are JP. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We have two good Bridget who are JP now. No, we have three now because Charlie Chaplin is a JP. Yes. Two of the rebel are JP and you are JP. So I am I am in good standing, man. <laughs> in good standing. <laughs> well, you see. We have to control all sectors of the system. Mm. And the 
this is what we are about doing now. In in in, in times, Ghana man, I say, yeah, yeah, bow to the queen when you go into it. Cause a man deal with me that way they already and try embarrass him on herself. Because I said to him, say, well, listen, we want to know when we rise up the system, we have all the people in the, the in the places to make the thing continue without any confusion. Mm. So we are all in the system now doing what we supposed to do that when that period of transition see, that argument place, never free that no, you know, when you say you're in the system, you know. We kind of get jumped when we hear no, the man, argument you can't, you can't, in the system. There's a me thing know, named... In the system is, 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 is a really serious thing. No. You see, what we have to understand, you know, mm. is the works of a man that why make you know him. So if I plan car and I can't raise fees. Mm. So I apply a man know my, my work from, from day one that I have been planting corn, so it's corn I going to reap. Mm-hmm. So even though I say, in the system, you have to know what is happening. So, all right, oh, you think the, 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 the white world penetrate for assassinate Malcolm X and them man. They infiltrate the system and put money in it for know what is yeah, happening. Yeah, but if, that, you see, but we can do that if we are penetrated, we're going to kill off some of the politicians and them, but we don't plan to do that. If we don't plan to do that now, then we infiltrate the system. Well, when white people do it, they might plan to kill we have. When we are infiltrated, then we don't plan to kill, kill, kill off nobody. Well, you see, the whole concept that we understand right now is how you do your thing methodically and do it within a way that they cannot suspect what is happening. You have to understand that they try to preempt anything you do. So as you know, your program, them listen to your program, mm-hmm. right? I say, well, yeah, man, that muta I say, that brother I say, that the man there say. We have to know now that we have to become clandestine with some of the things that we do. So just as how you have an inner circle in all these organizations mm-hmm. that contemplate and, and plan whatever clandestine movement within the organization. So you have to have it. Even the countries have it, you know. America have the CIA mm-hmm. that plan all of them clandestine work. England have the Scotland Yard. Russia have the KGB. All these organizations and countries have their inner circle that carry out the work. So, yeah, I say, no, we should have just got, become a CIA, infiltrate the CIA for, for what? Well, we should have done that. No, no, we are creating our black intelligence here. Uh, that well, they and, and will that know. About, that's why we need to know your inner system now is a problem because me think so we that try to create our own thing by, without using their logics, their understanding. You know, just no, no, you, you have a structure, you have a structure in place, you know. Mm. And for you to move that structure, you know, know which one of the pillars that hold up that structure, that when you lick that pillar, the structure fall. Yeah. You understand? You, you won't necessarily stay outside to know these things. So it is part of the whole thing that you have to be there to know the structure, to know what it is, and to know how to dismantle it. Yeah. If a man give a radio, you don't know for this man, you know. Even a bomb, if you don't know for this man, a bomb, you blow up yourself. Yeah, but you don't want this man, you want to put it somewhere where it blow up others. But you have to know how to move it, because some of them have well, all I different... don't think you have to go into the system if you go learn that, still, you know. Because the people, them who miss that bomb up place, you know, and riding and building a mat down place, they never go into the system if you go learn that. Them just operate a certain way and just do it. You know, no, and them learn it, you know, they them have to learn it from the system, you know, because the system create them. Remember, them it cut off our tradition, you know. So all that we know is what they have taught us through their system. It is, I and I know, coming through our genetic memory bank that is bringing out all of our ancient traditions coming forward through our genetic memory. As, as would I say, the real memory within our genetic ma- bank. Yeah, well, it's kind of debatable still, you know, but it's debatable. May I it, understand it, what you're saying? It's, it's a thin line, and it depends on how you, you see it. You can say a whole man at all about, you know, going at the system for change it, and then we say the system change them. Well, if, if they are not, if they are not convicted in their thoughts. But they were convicted in them thoughts. When they were saying it, they were convicted in them thoughts. As a matter of fact, 
they are now in the system and still convicted in the same time that them is freeing the people them. No, no, because they, they believe in a different philosophy. Mm. If you are grounded in the philosophy of Marcus Mosiah Garvey, there's no way you can support a structure that is working against you. And we know that any system that is not supporting the self-reliance of Marcus Garvey and the Africa as the motherland philosophy, then you, you, you're really not supporting your blackness. Yeah, poor you still have to be committed your blackness. Poor Shatim should believe that he's a Marcus Garvey. Rhetoric. Rhetoric. Let me not tell you. Oh, you know, poor Shatim should believe that he's a Marcus Garvey. I should work on behalf of Marcus Garvey. Anyway, we have to move at all. Well, one thing I want, I, I just want to add, that the, the name change in ceremony is not just the Christian name that, and you keep the, mm. the old surname. Yeah, the two of them. Like your name, William. And you yeah. keep the Williams and Young Love, the African name, and the first two Christian names. Mm. It is the total thing. Yeah. Christian name and surname will be changed. So all the descendants from that point forward yeah. will be total African. All right, so give thanks. Blessed love. Yeah, this is the culture that we want. You look Mama Fire on our earth, dear. Yes, Mama Fire. <laughs> yeah, man, I see you, you know. I think I never see you. Mama Fire, yellow Mama Fire upon our earth there. Yes, cutting it. Yell. What? Person drop asleep on them phone, man. Yell. So, my mama, I cut up my tune there, master. So, like, you're in a submarine. <laughs> so, like, you're there, I look for the Malaysian airline. You know, no. Always smoking. Lyrics like a bazooka. You are listening to Muta Baruka. Cutting it. Give thanks. Give thanks to life and keep off life. One your next student, them listen. All right, sir. Give thanks, man. DJ. DJ Kev. Yeah, man. We know you, man. <laughs> oh, the woman, man. With the phone card. We're gone. we over above everybody else. Phone card. Alabama. Actually, I'm sorry. I'm there now. Still on Ireland, you know? <laughs> Weird. Oh, you just all over the place, so that's that. That's cool, man. You see, there's two kids there, play a while ago. Where name are them? I want them now. Where name are them? Where name are them? The, the clip of my player? Yeah. Oh, oh. Yeah. Nah, you know, so I have to go back and go look. <laughs> me take it off at the top there, you know, I have to go back and go look, you know. All right, yeah. when you do it, just mention it on the program, yeah? The name, one of them name. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. The boss is brilliant now, man. No, I'm not. Oh, yeah, talk about my boss. You wait, you see me out to your boss, my way, because you have me for something. You're mad, but I'm not going to be a jotter. One name, the arrogance of religious persons. Okay. By a Richard Dawkins. And one name, learning to think critically. Learning to think. Learning to think critically is one of them. And the other one name, the arrogance of religious persons. Thank you. I come straight to the night. Alright, sir. Give me the strength. Yeah. Yeah, it's you, the name Romy and Green and Oklahoma. I put up most of the program on YouTube. Like I tell you last week. Romy and Green. Him. Yeah. Mm. I yesterday I talked to him. I tell me, say, if the since then start this one, seven years, the last year, April, mm. the amount of things that we have achieved since them time. And he was just 25 then. Mm. So I had a more shocking company. And I said, are you Muta Baruka spot them vibes there? Then put that by YouTube? No, I mean, I'm just a reason. Oh, yeah, I'm a reason, that. yeah. Oh, eh? Hey. Yeah, I'm a show me, say, you more. I'm not calling in, I'm just saying, I record them. I'm just for other people to hear it too. Mm hmm. Just, it motivates them, it motivates them. Yeah, so, mm. yeah, so, you know? Just think about my advice in the wilderness, you know? Yeah, alright. But we realize that still, we realize that, man. Yeah, man, likewise, motivate me and my sister to deal with a spiritual journey, I know, you know? Alright, give time. Even say I move towards 
Lacking like, you know, here and you know, get a fight for certain people. Because mm. you see, people that are in front of you. But more of them are going to them are going to say it's a fashion. Yeah, see. Mm. I see the Jim Jones there, so I think I'm going to take it out. I mean, I said, no, man. What the fuck you hear about it? I hear about Jim Jones there, I never really sit down and look into what, it, what I really do. Yeah, man, the man make about 200 people take poison, man, and kill themselves, man. You know the name of the Lord? That's 900 people, man. Oh, 900? You know what I mean? I said 200. And 276 were children. Yeah. Pull it up every dead body lay down. Yeah, man, a serious thing in a Guyana, man. He just called all of them in the name of Jesus, man. Because he's going down there in the name of Jesus, you know. Mm. And then get the people them so wind up and hook like up, brainwash. Yeah, man, that them just take the poison and just commit suicide, man. Yeah, because I must say, like, them all gonna kill all the children, them, and this are the only way. Yeah, them, them, them can't escape. Like, they don't want to make poison, man. Yeah. Yeah, man, that's, that's a serious thing, that, man. man. Yeah, man, that's why we mentioned it in the poem. But I guess nobody now. At a university, this one, we are little cutting edge, you know, man. Yeah. University, because everything we are right down, and. You check out the operation now too. There was a next serious thing again, man. <laughs> Why you not easy? <laughs> you not easy. Every car easy, you know, Mucha. You have to tell you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. the car is in the car. You think I lie at the end of it. Yeah, we say you go check out the operation now too. That you say the man they set up something to catch you, unbelievable. Yeah. Them did a plan to kill them own people, you know, to spite catch you, you know. Yeah, that me I said too. Yeah, man. That's the thing. All right, let me print them off and me I said, me I go have them in my camp, police, or see me, go like the way. Mm. I was, what kind of kind of thing to this again? They never, I, you yeah. never know, said, they never think them, the Stutsky experiment. You ever hear about the Stutsky experiment? Yeah, we know that in Alabama. Where, where them, where them, where them inject 300 black people with syphilis. With syphilis. And a great yeah. experiment for them. And it's a woman find out, you know, and bust it out, you know. That years after yeah. like the 90s, they, when them Bill Clinton come apologize for it. Apologize after the people have done that. Yeah, man. And then them have a next one where them use so, like in a East LA, eh? them use so carry like a van loader gun in the ghetto and just left the van lo- van in the middle light. And when them, when the youth them come and see the van in the man in a open it, a pure gun in there. And so them distribute yeah. gun monks to youth them. By left a van load of gun on the air. Yeah, man. Let me also do that, man. To break down this and cause political unrest. Yeah, man. Some different. Yeah, so that them do in a Watts and all them places. Them do them things in a Watts. In a East LA. Them places where you find. And in a San Francisco. Oakland. Yeah. Yeah, man. The man them just drive a big, a big 15 seater van in there. Full it a pure gun, man. And left it there, man. If you get a gun, that's all. To shoot one another. Tell them, man. So, let's check out the thing there. Before me go, me have a friend, me try to get her for the game, and they cut next to work over you, take the Yannick. So, let me tell her, I'm call her name, because she lives to read. name, the song, yeah, like, me book yeah. up that name, they already somewhere, you know. Yeah, yeah, I said, me not listen to read, you know, me can't listen to nothing, so me call her name, you better listen next week. <laughs> All right, man. <laughs> All right, sir. All right, so, man, look how we accept. Hey, the yeah. morning, you want to get extra hour for cutting it, you know. Four o'clock, you come out. Cutting edge, no, three o'clock. No, man. Next hour, man. Next no, hour, me can't put on a What think I might read a state on that? What you talking about, man? <laughs> I feel it. I feel it. All right, sir. Get done. Cut- his mother. Yes, cutting it. Can you hear me? Yeah, man. I hear you, yeah, man. Yeah, man. This is Clive, a.k.a. Chris Dogo, you know? Um, well, you can give me a minute to make a talk to your listeners, then. Mm. Yeah, man. This, um... And you talk to most of the them from Jamaica, US, Britain, and the world, you know, especially the one them with the YouTube and Bill Gates and Roman channel. You know, if you over 20 years most I highlight the problem, they might get solution. But, you know, I feel black people, but most alone can't do it alone, you know. But all we do, I think listening and we do, we talk and we complain amongst ourselves and pass blame. And I wish the government, white man, rich man, and Jack and Jesus to serve them. Black people, if you know, say, and a responsibility that so other people serve them problem, you know. And if you know, say, the man we have been put by his neck, 
color. The color being, you know, we had a, we had an issue with our color. You okay. know, we don't love our color. Okay. We don't love our blackness. And we've been, we've been bombarded with the Western culture, so we don't love ourselves no more. So, we want to touch on a little thing. The mother said, as a boy, so below. So, what is it? You know, the spiritual realm in the, in the habitation of souls. The degree of your knowledge dictates what kind of color you reflect. The lowest, the students, the beginners, the young souls reflect a white color. All the other advanced souls reflect a more yellowish, reddish color, and the masters reflect a bright blue color. So, just imagine black in the habitation of souls. Yeah, so, Stop loving, stop loving yourself. I know that you are the first. See? See, and another thing I want to say, we start, we need to start a good network for our kids in being friendly with the bookstore and the library. Do the network and bring the books in your home. And if you have to, drive the kids them to learn. That's what we have to do because we have no friends and we're tired of waiting. We're tired of waiting. We ain't, we ain't waiting on Jesus no more. We ain't waiting on the bus no more. In order for you to free your mind, you got to be enlightened in your head, in your heaven. And you ain't going to do it just standing around because in order for Mark of God to talk, walk and talk like you did, you have to read, you have to go to the book. And he told you that. So you, you stay there standing around. You're going to be in the same condition five years from now. What? So, yeah. oh, I tell you, man. Yeah, man. We hear it, man. We hear it. We hear it. Give thanks. Give thanks, brethren. Yes. I get emotional on the program. Yeah. It's not both girls. <laughs> Grace Jones, corporate cannibals, corporate cannibals. We've gone over the time, I know it's seven minutes past two, but we are going to two to three, yes. Yeah, Mota. Yes, sir. Yeah, the, the more I talk about the reality where I face the youth them where in the ghetto. You get the answer? Me, I hear you, man. Yeah, so the reality where I face now is it has come off of the same slavery thing. Because we also run in the West where we definitely are come from slavery. And Joel Chambers is from Central Village, you know. The artist. All right. When time we get independent, no, for the black people, they never plan to work back on the plantation. No more. So, the Chinese people, them get invited, and the Indian people, them get invited. In Jamaica, them get a chance, them get a chance to work and get paid. And was, when they work over, they can always go back to them yard, or them get a them get them plane ticket to go back, or them get land if they're willing to stay. Black people never get that same way. So we still underneath the slavery after effect Buddha. By financial slavery. So the dollar bill are slavery. Because when the people worry about the bills and all these things we have to pay, it's a financial slavery from the IMF or from the monetary fund that will lend the people a money to. So Muta, when you see a youth out of the ghetto really, I try in best to come out. You have to do something creative. And when you're creative, the within yourself. You talk about yourself and you talk about the things that uplift you as a human. It seems like say you know if you have a voice and nobody life is important than the other. Cause life is life. So we you know I say it's a unity we need in terms of create 
creating a job base. I hear a brother call it that say we have to create something in that all of to earn. Because we talk about the problem and the problem face for every day. But we have to earn. We have to earn in order to get to self out of this quagmire of the land and all these things. I'm going to give thanks to the program I had the most as I say. Yeah. Yeah, man, I said. Yeah, man, I could not a good utterance, man. I could not say it after quick, deeply good utterance. We have a creative, but when you're creative as a ghetto youth, it seems like so you know if you have a voice and you know if you can yeah. talk to yourself. Yeah, where we give the voice right for that program, yeah, that we do. Yeah, I'm going to give thanks to yeah. the creative platform yeah, and the ears, yeah, do it. I'm going to see over the years. I'm glad you get another extension of the program. All right, like, so give me good. Yes. So when me a paint, me can't listen it and <laughs> oh. I'm going to choose, so I'm going to give thanks for the extension. I'm, I'm going to say, I'm going to give my money. Hey. Me a month, yeah, man. All me right, sir. So take it, man. Take it, take it, take yeah, it. Yeah, so own. I take start celebrating from the first, you know. Yeah. You know? Leave some for me, though. Leave some of the month for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm going to give thanks to the strength, Mota. Yeah, man, give thanks to me. It still need oh, the, the creativity for the youth, them, the job employment, creativity. Yeah. 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 All right, yeah. yeah. Yeah, listen to the radio, Bridget. Stop listening to the radio, now, man. Yeah, yeah, man. You're messing up. Huh? Bridget, you just read that reason a while ago. Mm. I'm going to love the reason from Central Village, you see? Yeah. It's a special land. It's like what they call you about the two of them plant of a vineyard, you see? Mm. Yeah, man. It's from 1960, the first recording now, though, was um, King Toby. See? And a long time ago, I wait and can't get a chance. If you believe in yourself, you can't get what you want, right? Mm. Virgin, you listen to your radio, Rasta. I don't understand why you can't understand that. If you listen to your radio, it might confuse you. You understand? So, you have to just work it out. What up? Blessed. Blessed man. Yeah, the extension. I love the extension of the program. Mm. Yeah, um, you I don't favor, I don't favor, you know. Oh, all right. I don't favor, yeah, I throw my man gap and leave. Okay, okay, okay. Yes. Because, you know, I'm waiting for me to go to wait. Oh, but they're still there, yeah. You think that somebody needs to play about that, about that. Yeah, because I'm waiting for me to wait, you know. Because I'm waiting for me to sleep about the whole program. Yeah. You know, because I'm just coming in tired, you know, just asleep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm always tuning in still. Mm. Yeah, it's like, it's like, you remember I said, it's like being a vegetarian, it's like, it just makes you look pun. It's like, it's like a thinking different, you know, it's like, it's like a thing more compassionate, mm -hmm. it's like, the, the, it's like you just see the whole world in a different light. Of course. You know, because to me, when I eat certain, like, animal product, it's mm -hmm. like, it blocks certain energies. Yeah, when well, it's the yeah. an animal, and dead are dead, you know, alive, alive, you know. And, yeah, you know. It's a, yeah, you know, it's a, like when I eat plant beer, it just feel um, vibrant, you know. Mm. It, it just feel energetic, and you just feel, it's like you're just in your consciousness, you know. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. you're just aware of everything. So how long have you gone vegetarian? You know, you know what, uh, from 2010, though. 2010, yes. Yeah, yeah, from 2010, and right now, my team, I look back, we're still going strong. Yes. You know, because one thing, when, when I have a vegetarian still, it's like, a lot of people um, ostracize you. Yeah. A lot of boys. Where you get your protein healthy. from? Where you get your protein yeah. from? That person never uh, asked you. That, yeah, where you get your protein? It's like protein. It's like protein will come from meat to them, you know? It's like, if you don't go away, you can't get protein from meat. A joke yeah, business. I'm always wonder. Yeah. You know, because to me, protein is everywhere around. Yeah, man. You know, even a simple nut them. Yeah, you avocado, know? avocado, protein is enough. Yeah, but yeah, sorry, it's vegetable. like, yeah. yeah, it's like the man, them are um, like a big issue. Mm. You know, I make it become so complex. It's, it's like, to me, it's like the more things simple, and the more they make it become complex. complex. Yeah. Simplicity, yeah. yeah, simplicity in life, a life yeah. that's complicated. You know, and, and some people who I tell you to, then the photo is some scholars, you know. Mm. Yeah, and well, as scholars, as scholars, that's what I'm naming them, you know, as scholars, you know. Scholars. <laughs> yeah, as scholars, you know. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, man, you talk brethren. Yeah, man, blessed. Yes. Yeah, man, as scholars, them name. You have to know that. 
don't hear nobody I talk about repatriation again. What go on? You know, you're about to have repatriation. What do you say, man? No, 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 everybody I talk about one dollar we have a chat. No, 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 you're not listening, man. You know, you're all, all making me talk about repatriation, you know. He might be done, man. Man, no, he man, no, no, man, no, man. I tell you, say, I will if I want to talk about repatriation, man. Yeah, yeah, I don't know if I tell you, but me, uh, uh, every day me hear somebody at that worry about me, John. Because I wonder for the food, we are consumer, keep it distracted from that, that, that main goal, you know? I don't know, I don't know about the food that is me, but most of the places of me go is repatriation and reparation is the, is the team of the program and how man I work it out. I improvement on certain news more highlight than certain news, you know? Yeah, well, you need to go out somewhere meeting them. All over the place. Achoo, 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 yeah. motor. Yeah. But give thanks to them and keep the work going. Cutting, cutting a stepping razor. Yes. More love. Yeah, man, give thanks, Bridgman. Ah. Out. It's for that blessing, man. Yeah, man. What you doing, man? Every day, man. The bank. Withdrawal tax. Yes. Withdrawal. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, them leak that now, you know, them leak that now. So we don't need, need to talk about that again. That done gone, you know, them. No, them no, no. What you say? What me say? Me say bank withdrawal tax. Withdrawal. Oh, oh, the okay. Process. Oh, me never hear that part. Withdrawal. Yeah, yeah, them withdrawal. Yeah. yeah, man, yeah, man. The process of withdrawal is something that your program and the masses need to study and master some more for other things to be withdrawn. Okay. You over. Yeah, man. We are, we are, oh, you mean it's over, man. We're not it's still a long time, man. Because based on how I hear the minister talking, them realize that eh, the mass, the masses are the people. Yes. They must listen. They must listen. Take other things. This one wasn't going to go down. So. Yeah, they must listen because that one that looked did intense. That one that did look really bad. Yeah, you know what I mean? Intense. Yeah, man. Yeah. So, you know, there are other things, you know, yeah. other things that we need to get the same results, but we need to study this one and talk about it. All right, the other one we need to talk about when you come forward is the Energy World International people, you know what I mean? All right, Bresson, give thanks. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we say 